Hello everyone, Melanie here with CGL. And today we're gonna to be talking about the career of the one and only techno king, Elon Musk. Now what we'll do when we do these deep dives into individuals' careers, I'm gonna tell you more than you're gonna find in their biography on the company pages or on their Wikipedia page. We're gonna actually dive into Elon Musk's, not only his upbringing and where he went to school, We'll talk about how he got into the career that he got into. We'll talk about his competencies that he has. And if you are looking at having a career like Elon Musk, some of the things he did to set himself apart. So let's take this time now and look at his education and career path for all of you like-minded serial entrepreneurs. Now you probably know Elon Musk probably best as the founder of SpaceX, the Boring Company, CEO of Tesla, and co-founder of OpenAI. He's also one of the richest people in the world. Now, Elon grew up in South Africa and his tech career began very early with actually, he had a Commodore VIC-20 at the age of 10. Now, after learning computer programming on his own, he actually created and sold a video game called Blast Art to a magazine for a whopping $500, which actually was probably really good back then when he was 10. He then began his academic career at the University of Pretoria while trying to get a visa into Canada and was able to successfully soon transfer that to Queen's University in Canada. Now let's talk first about the University of Pretoria in South Africa. It has about 50,000 students and was established in 1908. And it's actually well known for its veterinary school, but its Gordon Institute of Business Sciences group is also well recognized as one of the top ranked business schools in Africa and the rest of the world for executive education. Now, as a university, it, it actually went through a transformation in the 1980s to segregate and to be open to students from all races. But that was not officially declared, actually, until 1989, which is less than a decade before Elon attended. Now, again, he didn't attend for a long period of time because he ended up transferring to Queen's University in Canada. Now, Queen's University has been around since 1841. And when it was first established as to prepare students, it was to prepare them for ministry. It is a bit smaller, of course, than the University of Pretoria in regard to student population with approximately 23,000. And now he has, he was there, I should say, for about two years before he actually transferred again to another university. But if you look on the alumni page for Queens College, you will see him listed under notable alumni, even though he didn't technically graduate from there. So he did transfer out after about two years to the University of Pennsylvania. And in 1997, he obtained a bachelor's of science degree in economics and a Bachelor of Arts degree in physics. Now, the University of Pennsylvania is a private university, which was founded in 1740, and in fact was chartered before the Declaration of Independence. Who was the first president of this institution? Ben Franklin. Yep, an incredible inventor in his own right, Ben Franklin. From a size perspective, again, it's only about 22,000 students in any given year, but an incredible list of alumni have attended. There has been three U.S. Supreme Court justices, 32 U.S. senators, 46 U.S. governors, 163 members of the U.S. House of Representatives, eight signers of the Declaration of Independence, and seven signers of the U.S. Constitution. That's not including 24 members of the Continental Congress, 14 heads of state, two presidents of the U.S., and as of October 19, 2019, 36 Nobel laureates, 80 members of the Academy of Arts and Sciences, and 64 billionaires. Yeah, there has been quite a good group affiliated with that university. In addition, it was actually America's first medical school, the first teaching hospital, and is where the American Medical Association was actually founded, started. And it was the first university in the US to award a PhD to an African-American woman. Hugely, hugely amazing group of alumni out of this university 
of which Elon was one. Now, it is very, very difficult to get into. Don't believe me? Well, in the fall of 2020, there was over 42,000 applications submitted, and they only let in 8.07% of the applicants. 8.07. If you want to go here to be considered, you will need an exceptional, an exceptional GPA, a previous school ranking that's outstanding and great recommendations. The school has an incredible reputation and seems to be able to back it up with an incredible number of its alumni being very, very successful. Is it worth it? Let's say, take a look at the comments of the website. See what you think about it. Let me know your thoughts if you think it's worth it once you do some look on their web, looking on their website down in our comments below. Now, let's move on. Elon wasn't just completely focused on education and was able to gain practical experience as well. It is very important to note that he did, uh, he did do some internships while still in college. Um, he actually had two, and the uh, first one was in Silicon Valley during the summer at an energy storage startup called Pinnacle Research Institute. And they researched electrolytic ultracapacitors for energy storage. Sound kind of familiar? And at the Palo Alto based startup, Rocket Science Games. Yep, Rocket Science Games. Now, if you wanna see some of the video games in that company um, that they produced, Good luck, because they all bombed terribly and the company went out of business. So you can't even see any of those things that he may have worked at way back then. Well, so now let's go back because he's right at the point where he's looking at graduating. And, and after graduating in 95, he actually moved to California to attend Stanford University. He was going to be pursuing a PhD in energy physics and material science. But wait for it. He dropped out after two days. Yep two days. He must have had such a strong desire at that point to take control of his own destiny. And instead, he chose to co-found a company with his brother called Zip2. Now, let's talk about Zip2. He, again, started it with his brother, Kimball, and with someone else by the name of Greg Corey. Now, Zip2 was originally called Global Link Information Network. And essentially, it was an online guide to the city where businesses would have a presence on the internet and people could get directions to those businesses. He talks about the hard lean initial dates where they were struggling. But by February of 1999, when Compaq acquired Zip2, he received $22 million for his share. Not bad for four years, I'm just saying. Now, it was apparently very clear to Elon at this point that he was going to be an entrepreneur because he then almost immediately co-founded online bank x.com. And this provided online financial services and was an email payment system or email payment focused company. Now, this was a tumultuous time for Elon with a lot of fighting in the organization where he actually lost the CEO role of it only to gain it back and then lose it again. Regardless, for those of you who don't recognize x.com, it is because you probably know it by PayPal. Yep, PayPal. Now, eventually eBay bought PayPal. Pay <laughs> Eventually, eBay bought PayPal, try saying that five times fast, and that is where Elon received in excess of $100 million. Yes, $100 million. Now, notice the pattern here. He doesn't appear to be too sentimental of the holdings and is willing to, pay, to take that buyout of cash when offered and move on to something bigger and better. Well, in 2002, Elon founded SpaceX. Many think Tesla came first, but it was actually SpaceX. You may have heard or seen him talk about the start of SpaceX. We had an idea to grow food on Mars called the Mars Oasis. And he actually went with a group to Russia to try and buy missiles to send the necessary materials to space. I kid you not. But what happened is the Russian experts wouldn't take him serious with some reports stating that one of them even spat on him. Now, if you wanna know about the base competencies for Elon Musk, persistence is definitely one of them. Rather than deciding to do something else by this insult, he went ahead and formed SpaceX.
At one point, he did actually go back to Russia for a second time to buy some. They at least came back with a price this time. He felt it was too high, so as any serial entrepreneur would do, he started a company. Now, by the way, you may have recently heard about SpaceX's success and earning a $2.9 billion contract from NASA. If you are interested in joining SpaceX as a company, we do have a video that will help you by taking you through everything you should know so you can do better during the, the application process and all the other pieces. We have ones on SpaceX, on Tesla, on Neuralink. So if you're interested in joining one of his companies, make sure you do check out the other videos that we have, which is uh, on our CGO recruiting. They will definitely help you know all the details you need to know before you apply. Okay, let's keep going. So in 2004, now while all of this is going on with SpaceX, he joined Tesla Motors as chairman after assisting with the Series A funding. He didn't become CEO until actually 2008 when the company started to have some financial troubles. And in 2009, he was actually designated as a co-founder as a result of a lawsuit. And we all know Tesla, you know, is now on the S&P 500. Now, 2005, he decided to open or co-found OpenAI. And OpenAI is actually a nonprofit which turns into a for-profit a little bit later in its um, path after getting substantial funding boost from Microsoft. He then went on in 2016 to found Neuralink and The Boring Company um, and more. He is definitely that serial entrepreneur. Now, is he an engineer? No. Physicist? Technically, yes. But what is Elon's biggest career strength? We can look to a quote he said in an interview, and the quote was, quote, if you make something that has high value to people, even if it's just a little game or some improvement in photo sharing, if it has a small amount of good for a large number of people, I think that's fine. Stuff doesn't need to change the world to be good, end quote. Now let's talk about all of his great advancements and accomplishments and things that he's done. What are the core competencies that we see in Elon? The first is he has an insane curiosity. He is insanely curious. You know, he even states that he read the encyclopedia as a child. He also has the ability to look at fundamentals and then make sense of how to approach it in a new way. He also has the ability to focus on the larger picture and stay true to mission. He one point in time had a quote that he said where he wanted to be involved with technology and his passion overrides his fear. He never looked for that cushy life. He is very aware of and embracing of his learning style and the importance of what Covey would call sharpening the saw or as he puts it, he gamified the process of learning. He also has an incredible amount of resilience. If someone like when he went to Russia and was told, you know, no, or the person, you know, even was said that they spat on him, he has such strong resilience. His takeaway is fine. I'll, I'll do it myself. That's kind of who and what he is, that very strong resilience. He also has the ability to commit to a course of action with process improvement built into it. He has an incredibly strong belief in himself and his mission. And that's going on not just in one company, but in all of his different companies. He is truly a remarkable you know, individual and has earned that title of Techno King. I hope this inside look into the history and career of Elon Musk and some of what I believe to be his strongest core competencies helps you in your path for your career and your path to maybe be that same serial entrepreneur. All right, everyone, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.